you for having us. It's been an interesting two days, again, visiting DISH and the area around DISH. I'd like to do a short presentation on the results of the health impact, and then we will tell you about some air monitoring we've been performing over the last two days. As those of you who live in DISH know that you have 11 compressor stations side by side all together in one group and you've heard a lot about the kinds of emissions that are coming from those. And the operators of those 11 compressor stations are Atmos Energy, Chesapeake Energy, Prostex, Energy, Enbridge, and Energy Transfer Portals. And then there are gas metering stations interspersed in those 11 compressor stations, and they're operated by Atmos Energy, Prostex, Energy, and Enterprise. And then you also have gas wells on the Barnett Shale and condensates associated with the gas wells. <coughs> So what do we talk about when we talk about the compressor stations? What consists of a compressor station? It can have compressor engines, it can have compressor blow down, it can have condensate tanks, storage tanks, it has a truck loading rack. So each one that has a condensate has at least one truck loading rack to take the condensate into the truck and offsite. Glycol dehydration units, which have large amounts of benzene emissions. You have amine units, you have separators, and you have fugitive emission sources, meaning a fugitive source is wherever two connections are made, valves, flanges, and it sort of leaks. And whatever kind of valve you have, from the day you install it, it leaks. The manufacturer will tell you how much it leaks from the very beginning, and after that, as it ages, it leaks more and more. So last time when we were here, we had these photographs on that window in the back. And what we used to do these photographs was an infrared camera that measures the emissions from the compressor stations. So this was taken some distance away across a pasture. And you see the red arrows indicate where we could physically see the emission sources coming out as a result of looking through the special camera. Over the last two days, we've seen a lot of visible emission sources as well that we didn't need the camera. So when we start looking at the air emissions from compressor stations, they permit them by rule. That means that they apply, and the minute they apply, they have a permit. So the permit by rule allows them to discharge 25 tons a year of all the volatile organics combined. And I'll tell you a little bit about the organics and the kind of health impacts associated with them. You can also release 25 tons a year of sulfur dioxide. You can release 200 tons a year of nitrogen oxide and 250 tons a year of carbon monoxide. Permit by rule says this is one facility and they didn't do anything to do the cumulative effects of all 11 of those facilities right next to each other. Each one has this permit by rule for that specific location. The VOC emission permitted for other compressor stations and DISH are 4.01 to 9.66 tons a year. But there's one in this general area that has a limit that they applied for of more than 23 tons a year of volatile organics, and of that, more than 22 tons a year are from a single condensate tank. And you will hear us talk over and over again tonight about condensate, which is the liquidy portion of natural gas that they collect in the tank and then haul off-site in the trucks. They can put on recovery systems so they don't vent as much of the condensate into the air. But in this case, we're seeing over and over by testing that they haven't incorporated these condensate vapor recovery systems at many of the units here in DISH.
Wolf Eagle, and Elise is here and we'll talk to you a little bit more, collected those seven ambient air samples in DISH in August, if you remember, of 2009. And the locations were north of the compressor stations on residential property and on the airfield. <coughs> and the reason she selected those locations is because the air was flowing across the compressor stations into the residential area. So you have to collect it if you want to see the worst case after the air passes the compressor stations and enters the residential area at the time she was doing the sampling. And she sampled for volatile organics, hazardous air pollutants, nitrogen oxide, and methane. 